All right, we're here at the Black Opry Review at the hideout. Uh, they're rolling through Chicago. I believe this is the fourth time that the Black Opry Review has been through Chicago. Maybe? I've, yes. Not sure. It's, it's different every time. Yeah. So it's right, right. It's hard to but I'm saying as a collective, the Black Opry Review yes. has been here yeah. through the Chicagoland area uh, four times. And I've been there three of the four times. Okay. So the one time I wasn't there, it was on Father's Day. Mm -hmm. And it was at a bar, and I couldn't take my kids. So. Right. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, like, some choices had to be made that day. I'm, I'm not going to lie. the babies over the grind. You got to yeah, yeah. do what you got to do, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, an amazing set, you know, as always. Um, you know, even though it is a collective, as solo artists, you all are amazing artists. And when you come together, let me tell you, it is something special. Um, so if I can just have you introduce yourself to all of our people out here. I am based in Boston, Massachusetts. I don't know what else you want me to say. Oh, you're all good? <laughs> yeah, whatever. You just, That's it. We're That's just having a conversation here. I'm Shug Daniels. Uh, I like to say Shug like sugar. Daniels, like you can buy me a shot later. I am originally from Delaware, and I'm currently based in the great city of Philadelphia. Perfect. All right, Shug, we like the sound. That's right, baby. <laughs> That's right, baby. My name's Tyler Bryant. Uh, it's Tyler with an A, T Y L A R. Uh, and I'm from the Lone Star State of Texas, uh, but I've been in Nashville b for about four years now, so. Perfect. Yeah. An Eagles fan and a, and a Cowboys fan out here loving on each other, getting along. And a oh, snack yeah. fan. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the snacks myself. Thank you. Um, so Tyler, when it comes to college football, you don't want to hear anything about any Sooners or anything like no, that. Nothing like that. Right, no, right. Nothing like that. We can stray away from all that. Okay. Where's your allegiance lie with uh, college football? <laughs> nice. Vince Young, greatest of all time oh, yeah, to roll yeah. through there? Yeah, yeah, the dude's a gun. I watched that game. It was 2005, right? Yeah. yeah I watched that game. I, I watched that the game, too. Season, yeah. I watched that game. Yeah, I saw that. That, was, that was something magical. Beautiful. All right, we're not going to dwell too much on the sports because, you know, there, there's something special that you all are doing um, with the Black Opry Review. Um, so the Black Opry Review is something that I kind of – fell in love with during the pandemic um, and, and the work that you know Holly's doing and everybody who's part of the Black Op Review is really amazing. So uh, Tyler, how is it that you got involved with Black Opry? Um, <clears throat> I mean, pretty much how it went, just randomly one day, uh, I get an email from uh, uh, Holly G. Mm -hmm. She says, uh, hey, I saw your video on YouTube. Uh, you did a cover of Luke Holmes Better Together. I really like it. She's like, I'm starting this blog, website. And uh, I want to feature, you know, black artists, country artists on this website. And yeah. she's like, do you, you know, would you want to be a part of it? And I'm like, uh, sure, you know. And so she was like, um, at first it seemed kind of like spammy a little bit. Because, <laughs> like, her, her profile picture was, like, black. And she's like, is this really, like, a thing that's going on? I'm like, okay, sure. So then she, uh, we actually hopped on the Zoom. Okay. So like, okay, so you actually are real. Okay, so like, run it by me again. What's going on? So now that I know this is sort of like a real thing, and so she's like, just a website, just to highlight, you know, black cars in the space. And um, later that year in September, um, during Americana Fest, uh, mm -hmm. she did the Outlaw House, and I actually was supposed to have a gig that week, but it got canceled. So I was able to go and meet everybody that uh, showed up, you know, during Americana Fest. And uh, from that, a couple weeks later, we, the review started, and I was I was on I was one of the I played on that review show, so I was one of the first, I guess. Yeah. I didn't know OG. that. I didn't know. It was, so it was going to, originally, she wanted to do a blog. Yeah, just a website, just to showcase black artists, because, like, you know, nobody knows about them. Holly yeah. did something, and it was so cool when she was telling me, because it's like, that's something I never even thought to do, was to just purposefully look for black artists mm -hmm. in the country space. Mm -hmm. Right. And like, just me as a black artist, I'm thinking, hey, they just not out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And that's not the case, and I'm just like, to... Just to have that forethought, and I remember early on in the Black Opry when we were touring, a lot of people thought that Holly was a musician. She was an artist. Yeah. <laughs> so she's like, no, I'm not an artist by no means. So I guess it shocked people that they were like, oh, so you're just like starting this thing to like help people? What? Yeah. It's like, it's yeah. Like, she's yeah. like, yeah, I'm just trying to like, these people are really good and like, y'all need to hear them. And so I'm just trying to help make that happen. And they're thinking, oh, we thought you were an artist, so. Yeah, what a concept, just helping people out, yeah, right? Yeah, you, 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 you hate that it's a thing. You, know, you hate that. Yeah. And, and Shook, how is it that you got involved? Uh, very similarly, um, Holly 
hit me up on Twitter. And at the time, they did, once again, have, like, the black profile picture. So I was like, I wonder what this is. And I had just moved to Philadelphia from Delaware. And I was like, you know, I moved to Philadelphia for music. It's got a great music scene. Mm -hmm. And they hit me up and said, do you want to play a show at City Winery? Which is a nice, it's like, you know, that's a pretty nice venue. Yeah, and we I'm have one thinking, here in Chicago, too. Yeah, oh, they're all over the place. They're yeah. great. Um, so, you know, I'm just getting in the city. I'm, like, playing basement shows and, like, you know, I, I was like, yeah, I'll play. And, it was, and I was like, does it pay? <laughs> She's like, yeah, I know yeah, it pays. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll do it. You know, this is pretty cool. I had no idea it was a writer's room. I didn't know anything about it. I just knew that some person wanted me to play my ukulele uh, for some money. So I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And as we get closer, she's like, oh, also, by the way, you're going to be on, you know, you're going to do some WXPN stuff, which is the local radio station, which is a big, uh, WXPN is very popular in that area. Mm -hmm. So it's like listener supported, all the fans come out, like, to the shows, like, everybody loves that radio station. So I was like, oh, wow, okay, that sounds great. And then she's like, oh, and also, by the way, you're going to be shooting uh, some, li a live session for NPR. And I was like, oh, we're going to be doing, wait, what? Yeah, World Cafe. World Cafe. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I was like, I oh, my reaction. God. Okay, which is very now that I've been working with Holly for longer. That's just, the, that is like, I mean, like that is her style. Like, it's just like, oh yeah, by the way, and we're like, I'm I'm the most amazing thing <laughs> ever. Hey, yeah, uh, Good Morning America is gonna be at the show tonight. But yeah, y'all kill it. Like, wait, but it's like, not, we're like so, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. So yeah, so I, I showed up that day. I was like super excited. Uh, I hadn't met anybody. Tyler was one of them. Uh, Autumn Nichols, uh, Roberta Lee, and Jet Holden. And so that was my first introduction. And I remember they walked in, and I felt like, you know, like when your cousins come for Christmas, the cousins that live across the country? Yeah. And, like, you're like, you can't wait to see them. I had never met any of them. But the moment they walked in, I was like, my cousins are here. <laughs> and, and, and every single time since then, it feels like it feels mm -hmm. like you're coming home. Mm -hmm. No matter if you've met them before or you haven't, the moment you're all in the room and it's, that's the lineup for the evening, the, for the night, it just feels like you're home. So, yeah, that was my, the, my first time I was hooked. We ended up, we had Airbnb. I lived in the city, so I just came back to hang out. Mm -hmm. And we ended up just, like, doing, we ran through the songs all over again. Some some neighbors that were in the Airbnb next to us were like, are you guys musicians? Like, yeah, they came in, and we just, like, jammed through all of our songs all over after our city winery set, which went, you know, that was great, too. So we just, like, had this, it just has this feeling of, like, we get on stage and we tell our stories, but also there's just like a grit and a heart to it and a passion. We love what we do. We love to create music and we love to play it for each other. Yeah. And with each other. Oh, and it shows on stage all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah for all of you. First, yeah, when I first met Ship was at the Philly show. We, when the review tour first started, it was like this. I don't like, so we did the Rockwood music. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah, like, I don't know. It, like, it was just a whirlwind, but the first few shows that we did, like we weren't getting paid for any of it. So everybody was just like, yeah, we're excited to just get out and play, mm -hmm. you know, get out in front of people and play. Right. And so it wasn't really like a, and it, like it wasn't a thing, but it was a thing, kind of. So we weren't getting paid. So by the time should, you know, we hey. were on that tour, you know, hey, we're getting, we're making money now, you know, so hey, things are looking good. And yeah. so uh, when you were talking about the, uh, after the show, we went up to the Airbnb. It was like, I don't know, it was like a three-story building. Almost right. a three-story building. The bottom uh, floor was a nightclub. Yep. And so when we got up to our Airbnb on the top, the third floor, you could hear the bass from the nightclub bassing hard in our room. <laughs> so um, uh, the neighbors who were staying like right next to us, uh, they had knocked on our door and popped in, and it was like a guy and somebody behind us. He was like, "Hey, y'all want to take shots?" And we we're like, "Yeah," because we we're actually looking to find alcohol, but clearly the laws are weird. Oh, or something weird. about it's like beer alcohol. stores, liquor stores, but they're not. To, they're not. To yeah, they're, they're state run or something yeah, like that, yeah, right? Yeah, it was okay. Crazy. So I'm just I like, ah, whatever. That. So I'm like, yeah, we want to take shots. And so they come in, and like eight other people come in behind us. Yeah. So there's probably like 20 of us in mm -hmm. this uh, in this Airbnb. We got two <laughs> noise complaints that night, and then we could hear the bass from the nightclub the whole right. time. But we got a noise complaint. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. That sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. and, and Grace, how did you fall into doing um, the shows with the? Well, not fall into it. I mean, I, I think it's really a. An honor and a privilege, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. To be part of the Black Opera Review. How is it that you got involved? So I know they said Holly slid into their DM. <laughs> I slid right into Holly's DM. Um, I, one of my uh, dear friends and an incredible um, musician as well, Jake Blunt, he mm. um, yes. retweeted nice. something that Holly said. And I was like, that was a little unhinged. Who is this? <laughs> and so I clicked it and I just started reading like, what she was saying and like I clicked her building her profile I was like 
oh my god this is really cool and then I saw that they had a bunch of dates coming up and that was the time that like there was some of them like still booking the shows but not don't really know who's gonna be on what show yet mm -hmm. um and so I was like hi um I really like what you're doing and I um see so you have a Boston date can I play it <laughs> <laughs> That's what, and she was like, oh my god, I love your music, this is amazing, yes, please, you'll be on it. And so, um, that was in March of 2021. Was it 2021? I think it was. Yeah, 2021. It's February 2021. February. It's February 2021. February. Um, wow. Yeah, so it was February 2021, it was the exact same lineup as you mm -hmm. so just oh yeah so that's really oh, funny it was on that same run it was on the, it same, was run. On the same run, run. Yeah, um yeah, yeah. so i just got there and i was like what i yeah. was like this is because i i worked um I, I worked at club passim uh in boston for three years and it's a beautiful place incredible but if you've ever been to boston like it's very white and especially the folk scene in boston it's very white so my exposure most of my life to folk music and Americana and country was rooms like that. And like rooms where it's just, I thought the only people who made this kind of music were white. And I was like, hey, I'm half white. <laughs> um, so it was, <laughs> so I was like, I'm gonna keep doing it. But then I walked in that room and it was like, oh my God, everyone else is doing it too. And that's just the magical thing about it is that we've all been here. But there's never been a platform or a place for us to go where we could find each other, mm -hmm. right? And it's just incredible that now I can just be like, hey, I need a black fiddle player. I can find 20 of them now because I have the whole Black Opry like, community. It's like, oh. Yeah. And, and so it's just being able to uplift and empower each other. I think that is the heart of it. And, um, yeah, so it was the best Twitter message I ever sent. <laughs> and see, I, for me, I've gone through, I'm going to say a denial for a while mm -hmm. and, and didn't admit that I was a big country fan. Yeah. So when my wife would ask me like, oh, you know, there's country shows coming up. I'm not going to a country show. Don't ever ask me to go to a country show. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, here we are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Black Opry was really one of the, the first that I kind of went to again mm -hmm. because I'm going to date myself. All right. So, you know, back in it, I was a big Johnny Cash fan mm -hmm. when, I was when I was 21 years old. House of Blues in Chicago, saw Johnny Cash. Oh, oh my God, iconic. Right when, you know, the first American Recordings album was coming out, blew my mind. You know, I'd listened to him, like, my whole life, mm -hmm. um, and I've, I've always had country in my life, right? My mom was a big Kenny Rogers fan, mm -hmm. and we had a Kenny Rogers photo in our living room like he was a member of the family. <laughs> oh, <laughs> He yeah. was a cousin. Yeah, yeah. like this collage of, yeah, a collage with him with a cowboy hat, and there's another one, you know, with him, and, you know. She was a fan. Yeah, we had, in our house, we had Lionel, you know, yeah. you knew who yeah, Lionel obviously. was, we had, and we had Kenny, obviously. right? And that was, mix, yeah. that was pretty much it, you know? I love that. The meat but, and uh, potatoes, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the salt and the pepper. Yeah, you know, that's right. what you need. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that right. But, I mean, but, like, like that's the thing, you know, you know, I, I feel... Like in the in our community, in the in the black community, what have you? You know, country music wasn't. It's been there. We know it. We know the songs and stuff like that. But now, with Black Opera Review, now when you say like, can you name a, a country artist who's black other than Darius Rucker or you know older folks will say Charlie Pride. Now there's there's this collective, oh, and it's like, goodness. yeah, it, it gets me because it's it's cool and doing the show that I do. I find new artists every week and I have new artists who are reaching out to me every week mm -hmm. who are like, hey, I like what you're doing. Can we talk? Absolutely, we'll talk. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I will, I'll talk to you every time. But, you know, it's just so great to see that. Um, so, yeah, and, it, and it's great to see what, you know, what you're doing because you have to think about it. Younger kids coming up. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, we you know, think they, about it. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm sure you get approached all the yeah. time about it. Mm -hmm. And you, you, know. were, you, were, uh, you were at the show uh, at the college. Yeah, yeah. Where was that? Where was that? At called? Dominican University. Yeah, Dominican University, and all the, the young the young kids that were there. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah. A, a father had brought his daughter with. Yeah, and her um, friends. And her friends, and they just they gravitated they gravitated right towards everyone, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they were, yeah, it was it was a lot. Yeah. It was a lot. It was cool to like to see like people really being inspired like mm -hmm. in front of your eyes like. 
man. Mm-hmm. Like, we don't see, like, it's so cool that, like, I what can you do guys anything. are doing. Yeah. You almost yeah. feel like a superhero. And it's like, dang, like, all that needed to inspire this person to do that was to see me on stage yeah. mm-hmm. doing what they want to do to just to give them that push. Yeah. And a lot of time, a lot of people don't don't see how, like, big of an impact that is. Like, oh, that's not a big deal. Oh, seeing yourself doing something, like, seeing people who look like you doing it, oh, it's kind of a big deal. Like, but it is. It's very impactful to see. Because it's like, if you don't see yourself mm-hmm. in something you want to do, you don't feel like you belong. Yeah. It's like, well, I, that's why they ain't doing it, because apparently they don't belong. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And so, it, I mean, it's powerful. That's probably the, the biggest takeaway I've had in this life, Bobby, was to see that, like, damn, we're inspiring people? No way. <laughs> and, and you do it well, and you do it very well. You know, that, that's like the thing, yeah. Like, I mean, your song, Stay Wild, we, I think we were talking before, it's, it's an anthem. Mm-hmm. It, it really is. It's only a matter of time. It, oh. <laughs> I think something as well is, like, on that note is that I've got, like, every show I have come away feeling like I, even if I did not, if I messed up, I didn't do a song the way I wanted to do it. I still feel like after every show, I'm like, I s- that still mattered. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like sometimes you can play a bad show and you're like, oh, why did I even do that? Like, I just got $20. Why did I do that? <laughs> um, but with these shows and, like, the audiences and the people who choose to come out, it's just so, so empowering because everyone's there to support you. And, like, last night... Um, there was this um, mom and her kids, her two kids, mm. and they came up to me before the show. Like, I ran into them in the elevator, and she was like, my daughters are so excited to see you. Like, we're so happy to be here. And it was a, a fan, like, two black little girls. And yeah. I never had that. I wish, I wish, I can only imagine, I can't imagine, I can't go back, obviously, but I can only imagine where I would be now if I had me at 11 when I learned how to play the guitar. Yeah. I can only imagine. So I am really excited and hopeful for the next generation of artists and even even current generation of artists to be like, oh, I'm doing this in my bedroom, but I can do this with other people because there's other black people here. Mm-hmm. Because you don't, you there even if there's just one other black person in the room, you feel safer. Oh, all the time. You feel yeah. safer, and spe- yeah. specifically. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, in general, yeah. you gotta give the nod. Yeah. 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 I'm here. I see you. No, because yeah. especially in these communities, yeah. right? Because right. it we have been conditioned. I'm from Florida. I know it's like half south, but I'm from Florida, and so it's like you think of these things, and you you immediately think, oh, the Confederate flag, you know, people using slurs. But it's like that's not the heart of country music. Country music, Americana, folk music. It's black. Like, this country would have no rhythm if it weren't for black people. This country wouldn't have a lot of stuff if it wasn't for black people. Oh, we would exactly. have a country. Yeah, we would not have a country. We wouldn't have, have a country. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that that's just something so awe-inspiring is that I I know I'll never have a bad Black Opry show. For sure. Even if nobody shows up. Yeah. Because I'm with my, yeah. my friends. My cousins. Sorry. My cousins. <laughs> it's like the, it's, it's a, I feel like the Black Opry has allowed me to kind of transcend from this, like, all right, I have a career. I want us all to see ourselves in them and for them to see themselves in us, no matter what color they are, Mm -hmm. no matter what color they are. And that's the thing that music is able to transcend everything. And these feelings and these emotions and these stories, they belong to all of us. Mm -hmm. They really do. Sometimes, like, you, as an artist, I feel like I write a song and I don't even feel like it belongs to me. I feel like almost sometimes like the universe chose me to tell this, this particular story. And it would be, it would really be a shame if I didn't tell it. Mm-hmm. So the Black Opry allows me to get in front of people. Like we went to St. Louis last night, I think there was like over like 300 people. And if I was just traveling by myself, mm. I, I mean, I hope that would be cool to get 10 people in the room in a city that you've never been to. Yeah. To be able to get that amount of people in into a room and to be able to tell them stories and have them feel connected to themselves and the people around them is right. nothing like it. There's nothing yeah. like it. Well, and I, and I think something, too, with country music, there's a, there's a certain way that the genre allows for you to give a, nar- give a narrative that you can't really in other forms of music, right? Yes. It, it, it's very much storytelling, yes. and it's a part of not only our history, but human history. Mm-hmm. So I, I guess, you know, kind of wrapping up here, 
the, the biggest takeaway that anybody can take from Black Opry. If they haven't been to a Black Opry show before, um, you know, what is it that they, that they can expect when they come out to the show? Uh, I would say expect to be a part of the show. Mm -hmm. Like, be a part of our stories, be a part of our banter, mm -hmm. be a part of, like, the energy that's going on in the room. I think it makes, it kind of makes the whole show, like, if, if you can get people to feel like they're a part of something, which they are a part of, like, hey, you decided to spend your evening hanging out with us, so, like, hang out with us, because, like, uh, when we're at the Black Opry House, the Outlet Houses, we share stories, we pass guitar around, mm -hmm. we do that all night long, and so, you know, we're comfortable doing that, and so it's basically hanging out at the Outlaw House. Y'all you know, just hang out with us. You know, if you, mm -hmm. you know if something's on your mind or something like that, say something. Hang out with us. It's, it's you know, we won't bite. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think for me, I think the biggest thing I want people to walk away is is that you always have the right and the the jurisdiction to take up space in whatever room you're in, and. I forget that a lot. I say sorry so much. And I've been trying to change my sorries to thank yous. And I think that just giving people the opportunity to recognize that, like, we're taking up space in a place that traditionally people don't think we exist in. It's because we belong. And you can belong in any place that you put yourself in as long as it's like a good place don't right, don't right. go do anything crazy yeah. stay wild yeah. but yeah stay wild <laughs> stay wild um, but yeah i think i think that's the biggest thing is like you deserve to take up space and you deserve to feel like you're a part of something and ideally it's being a part of a black opry audience mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i think for me it's just a for, it's just really just a night of discovery and community we're coming together because we want to, you know, we want to listen to music, but really it's this thing that's just so much bigger. You're, you're here to, we really want to have the audience engage with us and engage with each other. Oh. I hope they go home and I hope they talk about the show. What was their favorite song? What was, what was, what was the song that surprised them? Did they cry? People cry. People oh, yeah. cry at Black oh, yeah. Opera shows. Oh, I oh, make yeah. him cry all the time. I yeah, love it. Yes, time. yes. <laughs> I love the love making Tyler cry. Cry. <laughs> <laughs> cry. Uh, but it's, that's okay. You gotta get in touch him. with that stuff. It's all a part of our, our human, the human condition. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's beautiful. So just prepare. We are going to be vulnerable on stage. The stories that we tell are very vulnerable, and, and I really hope that we inspire people to get in touch with who they are on the mm -hmm. inside. Perfect. Well, make sure you're following uh, the Black Opry and all of these lovely individuals here in front of us. Um, they're all tagged underneath this video, too, so make sure that you're adding them to your playlist. You're supporting these artists because what they're doing here is, is something very special. It's, it's a movement, is how I've described it before. So... Thank you all so much for your time. Thank you. Appreciate you.